With Shadowlands Season 3 shortly coming to an end, we thought we'd set you guys up on the right track to reach your RPG goals by helping you with the hardest task, building your composition. And don't worry, we more than understand that getting 10 capable players all in the correct classes is challenging in itself. So to make it easier, we'll be building the composition based around three different categories, those being the core, the accessories, and the flavor. Before we get into it, if you're watching this video, then you're obviously serious about wanting to improve at RBGs. Skillcap.com is the only place on the planet where you can watch and learn how the best rated battleground players in the world play every single map, including over 90 minutes of in-depth strategy guides. And with a money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. So if you're looking to reach your rating goals this season regardless of bracket, be sure to check out Skillcap.com slash wow today. All right, so the first part of building any RPG lineup is to build the core by including some specs you cannot play without. As in any RPG lineup, you're going to need one tank, which is integral for both Warsong Gulch and Twin Peaks, and at least two specs capable of defending on the base maps. So think Arathi Basin, Eye of the Storm, and Deepwind Gorge, all of which will at some point need you to defend two bases at once. And finally, your three healers. Starting with the latter, it has to be said that there are definitely some superior healing specs when it comes to RBGs, but in terms of a core, if you're serious about pushing hero, then you're going to need two specific healers, Mistweaver Monk and Disciplined Priest, as playing without these two healing specs puts your team at a massive disadvantage. Disciplined Priests are the kings of both throughput and defensive cooldowns. Unlike what you would expect in Arena, Disc can really maximize atonement inside of RBGs, and it's this mechanic that makes them so incredibly strong. The ability to have a ton of purge the wickeds out, atonement active on all your teammates, and using penance off cooldown gives unmatched levels of throughput. This is then coupled with the recovery mechanic of Power Word Radiance and the Ultimate Radiance talent, which now only got stronger when paired with the Discipline 4 set. Power Word Barrier combined with Dome of Light also provides a fantastic answer to the burst-filled meta we currently reside in. And last but definitely not least, you can't underestimate the utility that Discipline brings. Like Shining Force for knocks on maps like Eye of the Storm or Silver Shard Mines, Leap of Faith for helping your flag carrier or teammates move across the map, and even Fey Guardians, which in RPGs has a meta-defining impact as it's used to reset a druid's incarnation. Mistweaver Monks, on the other hand, are still able to pump out very strong strong passive healing with the constant bounces of Renewing Mist and their mastery bonuses. And when free casting, there is nothing that quite compares to the single target healing that they can put out. Not to mention, monks are one of the most mobile healers, making them great at quickly floating to off bases, keeping up with the flag carriers, and just moving around the map in general. Utility-wise, monks surprisingly bring a lot to the table, with Ring of Peace being multifunctional, achieving zone denial, base spinning, and even knocking enemies, especially when combined with the Thunder is Focus T PvP talent. But what makes Mistweaver core to any RBG group is one ability in particular, that being Revival. Revival is just the god spell of RBGs. When combined with the Peace Weaver talent, it provides a complete teamfight reset, and is one of the only ways to counter things like Shadow Rift from Warlocks, Incarn Convokes from Balanced Druids, and Warlock offensive cooldowns. So with our two core healers, the other addition to our core is going to be a tank. For this role, the only real viable option right now if you're serious about rating gains is Guardian Druid. The main reason for this being the legacy of the Sleeper Legendary. This makes a Guardian immune to both crowd control and slows during its entire duration, allowing them the ability to easily kite with the flag, especially when combined with Soul Shape or Travel Form. Aside from this very overpowered Legendary, you can't underestimate something as simple as Prowl, which allows Guardian a much easier time picking up the flag to begin with. Just as a small disclaimer, you'll want your Guardian Druid to also be able to play Balance on Silver Shard Mines and Temple of Kotmogu. Due to the aforementioned Legendary, Guardian Druids also happen to be the best defenders and make up for one of our two required defending classes. And for the second, look no further than a Rogue. Rogues are basically the god DPS class of RPG, and can sway the outcome of any game if played well. As not only are they the best defenders alongside Guardian Druids, but Rogues also provide comeback potential as they're simultaneously the best base assaulters. And even on non-base maps, Rogue plays a key role providing very strong burst damage and lockdown for enemy flag or orb carriers. So just to recap, you want at least one Rogue and one Druid who can play Guardian with a balance off spec and then a Mistweaver and Disciplined Priest for your healing lineup. These specs fill out the absolute necessities for your team, and playing without any one of them will be a huge mistake. 
With the core out of the way, you're going to need to add some accessories to your composition. Picture your RBG group as building a bicycle. First of all, you need your frame, which is our core. Now we're adding the pedals and the wheels. In this case, that means making sure you have a balanced druid and affliction warlock alongside at least one melee with a mortal strike effect. The two best options for this right now are either a fury warrior or demon hunter, or if you want, both. Fury Warriors provide high consistent damage, which gets amplified further by the incredibly potent Slaughterhouse PvP talent, making it incredibly taxing on healers to keep focus targets alive. This is then combined with either the added burst damage from Necrolord Banner, or the additional lockdown from Spear Bastion, depending on the map and composition you're playing. Fury Warriors are also amongst the most mobile specs, especially when picking up the Leaper Legendary, which in RBG can be incredibly beneficial. Whereas Demon Hunters essentially offer the same thing, just passively. DH brings high consistent damage or burst from the hunt, coupled this time though with a slightly weaker but AoE healing reduction from Blade Dance, coupled with the Mortal Dance PvP talent. Just like Fury Warriors, Demon Hunters have great mobility, which can be used to keep up with enemy flag carriers or move between bases depending on the map. But the niche of DH is definitely down to their Spectral Sight, which plays a huge role on almost all maps as you're able to effectively keep tabs on enemy stealthers. Now you have your Mortal Strike effect, you're going to need some teamfight pressure, and nothing comes close to the power of an Affliction Warlock. With 925, Affliction saw some huge buffs in RPGs thanks to the introduction of the Shadowfall PvP talent, which in conjunction with the legendary Malefic Wrath and the Necrolord Covenant ability Decimating Bolt, makes Affliction have very potent damage that is hard to play around, namely one-shot potential with each of these bolts easily hitting upwards of 35k. Combine this with the fact that they already pump out more damage than any other spec, while also providing must-needed dispel protection with UA, you can see why you might want one in your lineup. Oh, and that's without even considering things like Healthstone, Demonic Gateway, and Shadow Rift. Much like a rogue, Balanced Druids are the jack-of-all-trades inside of RBGs, providing a decent threat in teamfight with high sustained damage and the annoyance of constant cyclones onto healers. Not to mention, they can swing teamfights with Incarnation and Convoke the Spirits. What makes Balanced so integral though is the simple fact that it's just a high mobility class with stealth and crowd control. Altogether, this makes Balanced Druids perfect for teaming up with rogues to assault bases or moving around the map in general, whether that be to catch up with a flag carrier or even peel to a base. So just to recap, your group at this point should include the core elements of Guardian Druid, Mistweaver Monk, Disciplined Priest, and Sub Rogue, while also including important accessories like Balanced Druid, Affliction Warlock, and then either a Fury Warrior or Demon Hunter, which then leaves us with three available slots. Going back to our bike analogy, this is the time where you can now look to develop some flair. So think adding a cool paint job, adding some lights on the spokes, or even sticking on a bell. Basically, we're adding some flavor, and as such, these final few spots are incredibly flexible. So here are some good options which still have a presence in the meta. Here you could throw in a Death Knight, which adds a partner in crime for your Demon Hunter or Fury Warrior to assist with grouping up targets and adding some high setup pressure during Abomination Limb. Aside from that, Frost DK rounds out any team comp nicely due to strong mechanics like Spell Warding, which will basically add Curse of Tongues to the whole enemy team. In a bracket where mobility is king, Frost Death Knights are the King Slayers, being able to slow down even the most mobile of specs thanks to Chains of Ice, Death Grip, and Blinding Sleet. Oh, and Death Knights special is going to be on maps like Eye of the Storm, where they can team up with an Affliction Warlock or Disciplined Priest to knock enemies to their demise. Another great choice is Retribution Paladin, which can prove to be a very good option, offering some unrivaled burst damage during their Avenging Wrath, which can very easily one-shot enemies, while also bringing strong utility tools like Double Freedom and Blessing of Protection. You also can't underestimate the off-healing that Ret provides, not only from the Word of Glories, but from the Luminescence PvP talent. Feral Druids can also be added to your composition and serve a very unique role. That role being that Feral is almost unrivaled when it comes to small skirmishes, where where their consistent damage, survivability, and off-healing really pulls through, making them good on maps like Silver Shard Mine for off-carts or even a Rothy Basin. Then there is Elemental Shaman, which poses an incredibly strong caster option for RBG right now, picking up a full mastery build in conjunction with the deeply rooted Elements Legendary. And in some cases, they can even rival Affliction Warlocks for damage, while still offering some good utility tools like Grounding or Sky Fury. 
Then for a third healer, you have Holy Paladins, who much like Disc, are able to dish out very high healing with their tier set Light of the Dawns. And what makes them strong is unique utility options like Aura Mastery to immune interrupts for your team, which works great with Convoke the Spirits, or Sacrifice, Freedom, and Bop, which can quickly save players in team fights or let them move around the map a lot easier. Most importantly though is Cleanse the Weak. It's this ability alone which makes Paladins a worthy spot inside of RBGs. As this one talent serves multiple purposes, you can reduce the disc's healing, reduce a balanced druid damage, and even make classes like Shadow Priest and Elemental Shaman non-existent. Finally, you might add a Restoration Druid, which gives you the additional benefit of having a healer with stealth, something we've stressed the importance of throughout this video. The only downside to Resto is their mana bar. Their HPS might be incredibly high, but their heals are less efficient than other meta healers, and unlike other healers, they lack the ability to easily save or recover the team fight if it takes a turn for the worse. So we know what some of you might be thinking. My class or spec wasn't mentioned and you guys only ever focus on what's meta. Well it's definitely the case that the upper end of RBG is a very narrow meta, but nonetheless let's highlight some of the non-meta specs which can still work despite having a few issues. Holy Priest and Restoration Shamans can both slot into RBG rosters. Holy Priest is the best out of the two, but is just a weaker alternative to Discipline and provides not only far less throughput and burst healing, but also its single target defensive cooldowns can't compete with the power of Dome of Light. Whereas Restoration Shaman brings some nice utility and even strong cooldowns with Link and Ascendance, but just suffers from a lack of throughput, something you can't really be without an RBG, so it's very rare you'll see them. Shadow Priest hasn't had a footing in RBG for some time due to a severe lack of damage and the fact it's very easily countered by Holy Paladin's Cleanse the Weak. However, much like Ellie Shaman's, given the right composition, Shadow can still be playable, with its main highlight being the power of Psy Fiend coupled with its instant CC to help set up kills. Frost Mage, Destruction Warlock, and Marksmanship Hunter are another three specs, which have all had some very minor showing in the bracket, all three of which provide the same role, that being very high casted damage, but with the drawback of easily being shut down. That being said, given the right circumstances and composition, all three of these specs can have an impact in teamfights. And last out of our non-meta highlights is Vengeance Demon Hunter, which offers the only semi-viable alternative to Guardian Druid. Although very durable, when facing Guardian Druids, you're going to massively struggle picking up the flag, as the enemy team can just all sit on you while their Guardian stays in stealth. Not to mention crossing the map and kiting becomes increasingly difficult without access to the slow and stun immunity that Guardian otherwise provides. Now you should have a better understanding of what classes make for a good RBG comp and why. It's now time to look at some archetypes and finalized compositions. First of all, remember that you should always avoid playing without the core specs and very rarely change or play without the accessories. But regardless, with this foundation, you can now create synergies and build your finalized compositions. It's worth noting that at the higher levels of play, there is a lot of class stacking, and it's often the case you'll see multiple of each of the core or accessory specs. There are three main composition archetypes when it comes to RBG. These are Spell Cleave, a Melee Cleave, and a composition built around objectives. Spell cleaves are made with the intention of having multiple caster threats and have a heavy focus around team fighting. The most popular variation of this is by adding an additional warlock, then either another balanced druid, elemental shaman, or even a death knight, while running either holy paladin or a second disc for the third healer. Melee cleaves run triple melee again with a heavy focus on team fight, but just with high single target pressure. There are multiple variations of this, but you'll want a fury warrior and death knight for the combination of necrolord banner and abomination limb, then either a retribution Paladin or Demon Hunter, but really you can mix and match any of these four melee to similar success. Whereas an objective focused composition will have a heavy focus on playing around objectives rather than team fights by substituting more stealth classes and skirmish specs. The most important aspect here is playing with double rogue and a frost DK for slowing. Whereas the third healer slot is very flexible and could also be a restoration druid if you wanted even more stealth. But we want to know what you think. What would be your ideal RBG comp? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, we want to remind you that skillcap.com is the best place for RBG related content in the world. Alongside guides on the strategy for every single map, you'll also find additional courses where we not only teach you how to set up your character ready for RBGs, but also also guides on all the small tidbits of knowledge you can't find anywhere else, like how to flag carry, and even some tips and tricks that you more than likely didn't know. And for the same cost as a monthly Twitch sub, you can get instant access to so much more. So what are you waiting for? Visit skillcap.com wow to learn more.
Anyway, guys, that wraps up today's video. Once again, let us know your thoughts on RBG and compositions in the comments below. As always, we hope you learned something useful from this video, and good luck on your end of season pushes. Thanks for watching.